All right, next we'll go over the belt. So this is a Core Essentials duty belt, tactical belt, whatever you want to call it. Now Core is a very good brand of belt. They specialize in a track system. So instead of having a belt that you have to, you know, like a standard pants belt where you have the notches and you have to try and do it that way. This belt has a track system. So you cut it to size and it has a bunch of different sizes at quarter inch increments. It slides in the buckle and it ratchets through. To release it, there's a button on the back and the belt will come apart. Um, so that is a very nice feature. They make dress belts just to wear for pants. They make stiffer belts that we use for concealed carrying when you're carrying a gun. And they make these style uh, duty belts. Uh, I'm a fairly small person. I'm five foot seven, 135 pounds. Okay. Used to not be so small, but that's what I am right now. I wear between a, a size 28 waist and a 30. So I don't have a lot of real estate on my hips. So my belt, I carry a fair bit. My pack, I carry a bit. Play carrier, carry a bit. You spread it around to where it's comfortable. You have access to what you need, where you want it. Um, on your belt, or you, what you want to look for is something sturdy. Because when you're putting a bunch of crap on it, you don't want a flimsy belt. You want something that can withstand the weight of gun, ammunition, medical pack, whatever else you're going to put onto your belt. You do not want the belt to flex. You do not want the belt to uh, crumble or anything like that. So this belt is four layers thick of, of nylon. I don't know how well that's going to show up, but it's four layers thick of nylon and there's a plastic core that runs through the center, which makes this belt very rigid. I got a pouch up front, I got magazines, I have a gun, and I have a knife. Um, so it's a couple pounds worth of stuff. Uh, I'm going to be adding a couple more pouches at some point. The other nice thing about this belt is it has micro molly, so you can weave molly pouches through it, okay? <clears throat> the other thing that this is, and you'll notice by the cat hair that's on it, is it's Velcro. It comes with an inner belt, which is soft side Velcro. And this is the rougher side of Velcro. So when you put the belt on, get my outer shirt out of the way here. You gotta start where the buckle is. And just kind of wrap the belt around. And cinch it in place. There's a keeper on it. To keep your flap from flapping around. I'll take this outer shirt off here. So it's a little easier to see what I'm doing. Because obviously with a duty belt or uh, any sort of out the waistband carry, a lot of times you're just going to have it, your shirt's tucked in. But, so this is what it looks like. And just for the Velcro and no keepers on it and the ratchet system, this isn't going anywhere. It's holding my pants up fine and the belt is not going to shift around so if you have to jog run bend whatever you're doing everything is going to stay in the same spot that you need it to uh, in particular you want your gun in the same spot every time uh, especially you want to train with your gear so if you go to the range take your duty gear whatever you're preps are, so to speak. Train with it so you become familiar with it. You don't want to find yourself in a situation you've never used this stuff before and now you have to use it. Uh, 
up front. I have a double handcuff pouch. Carries two sets of handcuffs. So I work in security work, that sort of thing. They're up front. I got two sets. And easy access. Now, when I used to work plain clothes for security, I would carry them on the back. Now, most police officers and most security guards that are open carrying stuff, they're going to carry them up front. It's easier to get to. And if you're in a struggle with someone, it's just that much easier to. When you're in a struggle with someone, you're rolling around, it's much easier to get something on the front of you versus on the back of you. Especially if you're rolling around, to, you're on your side or whatever. Uh, someone put cocaine in that cat's food today. Cat man. Behind that is magazines. Uh, this pouch, uh, this is a Condor handcuff pouch. This is a, I want to say an AR-500 magazine pouch, the same company as my armor. And it carries two pistol magazines. And right now, just because of the gun that's on it, it's Glock 19. It carries two of those. I orient it to bolts forward. Again, something that you would want to consider is how are your magazines oriented in your pouch? Just for the sake of doing it, I'm going to clear my gun. Because uh, when you want to do a reload, you want to do it the same every time. And the easiest thing that I found if bullets are forward and I'm left handed, so it's a clear gun. Slide lock back, I'm out of ammo. You gotta come down, drop the magazine, reach for it. My corner finger pointing down, grab my magazine. My pointer finger and the bullets are facing the same direction. I'm gonna spin my hand around, insert the magazine, drop the slide. Um, and the same for the back one as well. Now this particular pouch with these particular magazines, it, they're a little small. So there's not a lot of real estate too, but with training you can get pretty uh, comfortable with it. For example, my carrier gun for the winter is my PPQ-45. Okay. Um, although they carry the same amount of ammo. All right, bigger bullet, that sort of thing. Um, but pouch will fit both. Uh, fits this a little bit better. There's a little more real estate to grab onto. But with training, it can be done. So train with your gear. In retention, I took the, there was a Velcro flap that went over it. There's no need. There's enough retention in the elastic on the sides to retain the magazines. Uh, behind my pistol is a knife. This is a K bar USMC. And I can swap this knife out whenever I want. Take it off. I have it on there right now, just to have it. Um, this is more of a prep versus a daily use sort of thing. So, um, Add a pack, add your armor to it. Um, having a knife on your belt versus on your pack or on your armor, I'd rather have it on my belt. And this knife has been with me for pushing a decade, and it's still doing just fine. I'm beating snot out of it. Uh, it goes just fine. It takes a good edge. It has a good reputation from World War II. And I don't see any real difference almost 100 years later 
80 years later, whatever it's been, um, and their production of these knives. They're still a beast of a knife, even though they're not a true full tang knife, right? They're a rat tail tang, which is panned. Um, still plenty strong for most things. You're not going to chop down a tree with this thing, but um, from combat to just doing field work, it'll do you just fine. And not break the bank. Or make you feel sorry for beating a snot out of it. My pistol, Glock 19, it's clear. Um, this is on here right now because I have the most ammo for it between the two guns I own. Um, and in winter time, this is not my carry gun. So, I have the same style holster for both guns, so I can trade them in and out. It's on a tech lock. So I'll take the belt off, show you the tech lock. As you see, to get the belt off, I'll do the strap, and it's still there. Velcro holds it just fine. Take the Velcro off. And your tech lock. Just wraps around your belt and snaps in place. So to undo it, you gotta undo the lock, pinch your tabs, and the holster comes off. So I got one for this guy and I got one for my other gun. And I suggest that if you're doing any sort of duty work or any sort of prep where you may be in uh, close quarters with somebody and things go south, I suggest you get some sort of duty style holster, meaning it has a level of um, aggressive retention. Okay, so a passive retention would be from my 45 here, my inside the waistband holster. It's friction fit. There's no strap or button I have to press to draw my gun. All right, there's a click, so it's somewhat secure, but all I have to do is grab my gun and pull. That's passive retention. This is a level two holster, meaning that it's got two levels of retention, or two things have to be done in order to draw your weapon. It's got passive retention, so I put the weapon in there. Clicks in place, just like that other holster. Okay, it's friction fit. In this stage, all I have to do is draw my gun. But it also has a hood. Tigger, stop it. So, in the event that someone is trying to get my gun, it's not supposed to have my gun, it's not coming out until that hood comes down and then you can draw it. So there's that. Um, this particular holster is from Red River Tactical. Um, just because I wanted the same style holster for all my guns, I went with this because they make one for my 45, which not many companies do. So it's also got an optic, an optic cut. You have an optic on your weapon, and you can get it to have lights and that sort of thing. I don't carry lights on my pistols. Um, I just keep them pretty much bare bones. I have night sights on them. That's all I carry. So that's that. That's pretty much it. Fairly simple setup, but it does the job pretty well if not very well. Now, I will say, these belts are not cheap. All right, for the belt itself, you get inner belt and the outer belt, and the instructions on how to stop it. The instructions on how to use it. It's 120, 130 bucks. You get them on sale, you get a little bit of discount. All right, same. You can find them cheaper, but full price are about 130 bucks. I would say they're worth it. They got a good warranty. They're American made. 
Um, they come in a couple of different colors too. So there's that. See you later.